Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is the Explorer Note read-through for Mei Yin. The Explorer Notes are collectible items that are scattered across the Ark's core maps and help tell the original story of Ark. For every note found, the player gains 100 XP and a double XP boost for 10 minutes. It's advisable to pick these notes up while mounted on a creature so both the player and creature benefit from the XP boost. The effect is similar to that of the Broth of Enlightenment and due to the fact that the boost has a limited time, many players can skip the story to utilise this XP boost and level up their creatures. And that's why we've decided to do all of the note read-throughs here on Complete Games. And we continue with the notes from Mei Ying Li, a Chinese warrior who wrote her notes like ancient Chinese poems. And I will take this opportunity to address some of the questions as the notes don't necessarily run in a chronological order. So some of the questions I've had about whether the characters have lived or died will have answers. And as we progress, these bits and pieces will be filled in. So I didn't really want to spoil it for you. For example, when we last left Mei Ying, she was on aberration, returning home with Diana to a hero's welcome after retrieving the artifact Santiago needed to complete the gateway. But since Mei Yin's last entry, some time has passed and we rejoin Mei Yin while Santiago is developing the technology for the tech mechs. So in the end, the fates of the survivors will be revealed. On that note, sit back, relax and enjoy part one of the notes from Mei Yin on Extinction. I have no urge to record my thoughts since your loss, or rather I've been avoiding it. Before speaking with Elena today, how many times did I ever dare say your name? Diana, you revealed facets of my heart and mind that had been hidden even to me, and in you I found something that I'd always been missing but could never name. How does one carry on after losing something like that? Even now I cannot say. I only know that it was draining and painful, and it would have been even worse had I done so alone. For those who yet live, I must endure, but I shall carry you with me every step, around my neck and in my heart, to the very end, always. Controlling this armoured giant has grown easier, but it will never feel familiar. Though its limbs move as mine do, that in itself is disquieting, and sometimes I get lost in the flashing lights around me. Helena is far more attuned to her giant's abilities than I am, though in as all things, she underestimates herself. Ever since I cast that monstrous old man into the depths, she's been there to pull me back, not just from the fall, but the abyss itself. I will still never understand why she was so interested in studying animal excrement when we first met, but after walking this path with her, I recognise the strength of her spirit. I will do all I can to protect it. We have arrived at the structure Helena wanted to investigate, and I fear if we do not enter soon that she will faint from the anticipation. She's been hopping to and fro like a rabbit while we set up camp, babbling excitedly about what we might find inside. I have never shared her curiosity for such mysteries. The why of it does not matter. Unless it will help us survive, then I do not care who built the empty places of this land or what their purpose was. However, I trust Helena's wisdom. Hopefully whatever we find here will state her, and perhaps grant me a moment of blissful silence at that. I dislike this place. Helena says it's an archive for lost knowledge, but it reminds me of the chambers we explored with Santiago, where beasts and men slept in countless glass coffins. If the halls where I battled Nerva were at the edge of heaven, then that place was surely one of the ten courts of hell. These halls do not radiate with the same evil, but it still does not feel like a place where men are meant to tread. There is sign of neither earth nor sky here. It's all unnatural metal and machines so foreign that even Diana's comrades cannot master them. I will speak with Kazuma about tightening our patrols. We must remain vigilant. These halls did hide one marvel. I should grant them that. I found it during my patrols, tucked away in a small chamber all its own. And while I do not know its purpose, its beauty is without question. It's shaped like a jewel, with a surface of polished stone and shimmering metal, glowing proudly with magnificent golden light. Though it floats above the ground, it's too sturdy to move. And though its light is warm, it's cool to touch. Helena will surely want to see this. However, until we fully understand it, I will be sure to supervise their study sessions. I do not understand what happened. When I touched the artifact, it did not respond at all. But as soon as Helena made contact, its golden glow became a blinding flash. By the time my vision cleared, the artifact was shattered. All that remained was a small gemstone made of pure sunlight, floating in its place. Was the rest of it merely a shell? Thankfully, Helena was uninjured, but my carelessness was still inexcusable. 
I swore that I would protect her, and I have nearly failed already. I should have been more thorough. I'm not one to repeat my mistakes. Before Elena could reach the gem, I snatched it from the air. I won't let her touch it unless I am certain it is safe. I'm tempted to smash this gemstone to pieces, though I am not certain how I would do so. When I hold it, I can feel a texture and a weight, yet it casts no shadow and it makes no sound when I tap its sides. It's as though at once it's here and somewhere far away, but Elena insists it's the key to answering her many questions. So for now, I'll let her study it from a safe distance. At first, my precautions earned me her ire, but it lacked true venom, and in time, she admitted my judgement was prudent. She says the gem might be capable of great change. I couldn't follow everything she described, but she is more cautious around it now. That is enough for me. Unfortunately, the gem may soon be the least of our concerns. A horde grows on the horizon, larger than we have ever seen, and led by a demon who stands so tall that the mountains bask in his shadow. When we realised it was heading our way, we picked up our camp and made for the wastes, yet as we moved, the horde followed. This is not mere misfortune. It is a hunt, and we are the prey. Helena claimed the gemstone may be able to help us, but I still forbade her from touching it. When we fight back to back, I can watch over her, but I can't protect her from something I don't understand. No. Should battle be joined, we shall meet them head on, no matter the size of our foes. I will fight with all that I am, and for the sake of everyone here, I must. This is my failure. At first, we forced the enemy back. So when their master finally set foot on the battlefield, I tried to slay him myself. That was our undoing. Even in my armoured giant, I couldn't even scratch his hide. Such disgusting weakness. Were it not for my second blunder, surely I would have died. But Elena had stolen that sunlit gem from me before the battle. Before the demon could crush me, she opened the shell of her giant, held the gem aloft and placed the metal mark upon her wrist. A terrible scream rang out in my mind, but it must have been far worse for the monsters. They recoiled in confusion, and I knew that would be our only chance. All but Elena and I lay dead or dying, and Elena herself lacked the strength to stand. So I cradled her in my giant's hands and ran. In shame and in defeat, I ran. I am a disgrace of a protector. Those were Diane's people, a living memory of her. She entrusted them to me, and I failed them all. Just as I failed Santiago, Rushui, and Diana herself. A true warrior should die defending what they love and care for. Yet I have let them all turn to ash while somehow I escape the flames. Every time, even now, the only person I could save barely clings to life. Veins of light creep across Helena's skin and she only wakes for minutes at a time. When she does, she speaks in poems that make no sense. She says a distant tomb is calling her name, and that we must go there. I asked if the tomb could cure her, but she only answered in riddles. Every time she wakes, her voice sounds further away. Helena, you must stay with me. Your heartbeat and your shallow breath, they are all I have left. Helena shakes and sweats in her sleep. She no longer opens her eyes. All I have left to guide me is the notes and maps that she scribbled out in a delirious frenzy. Sometimes she mumbles nonsense or moans in pain. I have to crush bits of food into fine powder and pour it down her throat with water. When we move, I strap her to the corner of my giant's control chamber and stop frequently to make sure she's alright. It's only because of my mistakes that she's in this state and I worry that she is fading. If I lose her too, then my failures will be complete. I do not know what I would do. Please, let her hold on. Do not take her too. Please. I have little trust in prophets or visions, but I fear that the tomb Helena spoke of may be her only chance. She does not respond to my presence anymore. Nothing I do rouses her. I only hope her maps are accurate. Even if they are, we still have so far to go. Though we have left the poisoned wastes behind, before us lies a land of ice and snow. A storm rages above. And even in this armoured giant, progress is slow. Each step is labour. I feel the giant grown weaker. It will need to feed on the violet fire, the element as Diana called it, if we hope to continue. I will have to brave the cold alone. There's a shooting pain in my left arm. I think it may be broken. It happened when I was searching for element. The storm and the journey had sapped my strength, and a pack of beasts caught me off guard. After a fierce battle, those I failed to slay finally fled, but the fight had taken its toll. 
It took me half a day to get back to camp. I kept slipping and falling in the snow. Each time my body told me not to get up, and a few times I almost listened. I wanted to so desperately. The pain, the cold, the exhaustion. I just want it to end. Maybe that's what it is. My limit. My end. As I slept in the belly of my armoured giant and the storm howled outside, I dreamed I was home again, in our little village in the Yi province. It was during the rebellion. Everyone was huddled together in an empty granary, debating surrender. Arguments went back and forth until at last I stood, grabbed a spear and made for the exit. See? Even this girl would rather die for her emperor than give in to that scum, one man declared. You're wrong, I replied turning to face him. I have no intention of dying. I will survive. The others talked about our memories not being our own, that the home I sought for for so long may have never existed at all. Perhaps that is true, but those words are mine, more than anything in the world. This is not the end. This is not where I fall. I will survive. Those beasts that attack me are mine. I retraced my steps to make sure that I found the same pack, and then I bent them to my will. They moved as though they could walk on air, leaping from one invisible stepping stone to another before pouncing at me. It made their movements hard to predict, but once I was able to snare them in the steel trap, their advantage was gone. Though they flung arrows of ice at me from afar, it was not enough to deter me. Once asleep, I coaxed them into obedience, and they accepted me as the leader of their pack. Their strength will help me on my journey, but I will need more still. This is just the beginning. And that concludes part one of the note read through from Mei Ying. We will be continuing later in the week with part two. So if you're new here and you haven't already done so, consider subscribing so you don't miss any more episodes of the Explorer Notes with myself. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.